Coming up on this episode of Outlook TV. Slave to the Square Wave. Carol Delinko. Halifax's Apocalyptic Kitchen. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Emily Ann Fraser. And you're watching Canada's queer magazine news show that brings you the most from coast to coast. We're going to kick it off with a band profile. Uh, talking about hip to be square. No, that's no. not right. Uh, a slave to the square wave. Ah, yes, thanks, young person. Tell me all about it. Well, I don't have to because this reporter is coming up next and will do that for me. Oh, perfect. You can call me a square head if you want, but it's hip to be square. We're catching up with Toronto's very own Slave to the Square Wave as they celebrate their 20th anniversary, as well as a new album called 2020. Let's find out more. It's definitely electronic rock uh, pop uh, music. Uh, we use all influences from acoustics to samples to loops. Uh, in our live show, uh, we, we're very Depeche Mode-like, where we do loops and samples and uh, play with that. Bob Stewart and myself uh, met at a rave in 1998, and uh, I really loved his sound. Uh, he was promoting his music called Electronic Dream Factory, and I was pushing a, a CD called Smoke and Jehovah, and uh, I loved his sound, uh, and he loved my sound, and we just got to chat that night and discovered that we're pretty much neighbors uh, in downtown Toronto. And from there, I, I remember walking over to his place on a Monday afternoon or a Wednesday afternoon, and he played his music, his pop music, and I played my sort of ideas, and we just sort of meshed, and uh, 20 years later, uh, we have a sort of a brotherhood. The idea was that, you know, it was the year 2020, uh, it was our 20th anniversary working together. Sort of at the beginning of, 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 the, of, the, of last year, we're like, let's get, let's get 20 songs out. Let's do the 2020, 2020. I put my head together, he put his head together, and we just sort of jammed out uh, 20 songs for the new album called 2020. <laughs> I am a gay man. Um, I'm the only gay in the village in the band, so uh, it's it's we get a lot of support from uh, the queer uh, community here in Toronto. They sort of identify with uh, the funness, uh, some of the lyrics. You know, my, my 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 lyric writing usually tends to have sort of uh, a gender twist to it. You know, not all of them, but there's a couple of songs like, you know, Bonnie and Clyde off the new album. It's got a little bit of a gender bending twist. The last the last song, um, Here Comes My Man, it's got a little bit of a sort of, a, you know, a, a, a gay thing going on. So, hey, my brothers and sisters, whether you're gay or straight, they come out, they have fun. And that's the whole thing. See us on YouTube, Slave to the Square Wave. Uh, you can hear us on Spotify if you want to stream us. And if you want to buy us, Bandcamp. And from one square head to another, this is Sister Fancy Pants for Outlook TV. Coming up for Vancouver Pride, it's the return of the ice cream bar. At the Fairmont, of course. Mmm, rather. Outlook TV has the scoop of ice cream. <laughs> Good one. We're at the Fairmont Hotel Vancouver to see what Fairmont Hotels are planning for Vancouver Pride 2021. Let's go see what they're going to do this year. For the Pride Month, uh, we're, uh, this year we're going to do a uh, rainbow uh, ice cream sandwich. Ice cream. Give me ice cream with whipped cream. Ice cream. The Pride Committee came from the request of staff really wanting to participate in Pride. And so about four years ago, um, our voices were heard and um, at each property we created um, Pride committees and got involved. Um, a lot of um, the projects that we do are very similar, um, but then we also come together, we came together for the Pride March all together um, 
which unfortunately didn't happen last year. And uh, this year we're going to do it virtually. Here I have the, uh, the finished product. Uh, once all the, the layers were, were put together and been uh, in the fridge for a while. So now when I'm going to put the knife through it, it kind of keeps its, its shape. One of the initiatives is a late checkout, um, a $50 um, late checkout fee that 100% uh, of those proceeds will go to donation as well. Um, so there's little things like that and uh, again the Pride Cocktail raising funds um, with us the um, Pride Rainbow Ice Cream Sandwich. So there's a few things in the works and you know as we come out of this um, particular time um, for next year we're just going to be growing this um, this sense of unity even more. Now we're gonna make the ice cream that's going into the, uh, with the ice cream sandwich, which is, the, then again, it's a lemon ice cream, cream and milk and egg yolk based ice cream. And strawberry chocolate taste, ice cool vanilla for me. We were so lucky to have Kendall Gender, a, a local, um, drag artist, I believe this year she's still um, the Empress of Vancouver and um, we are lucky enough to, to have her join us a, a few years back representing us in Pride, representing us um, for me at the, the Lady in Red Gala, she's our MC and I have to say the love she brings to that event and how she gets the community to come together um, as one united group is just so touching to, and an attestment to who she is. We've come up with a, um, a Fairmont Pride walk, a, blo a block party um, um, in essence. So we're going to be starting here on Wednesday um, at 3 o'clock and we'll walk down as a group in our Pride colors to our sister property, the Fairmont Pacific Rim. We'll collect them and then we'll continue on um, to our last stop, which will be the Fairmont Waterfront. So we'll have all the properties involved, and uh, after we'll, uh, we'll have a little cheers and uh, celebrate in a, in a lower key way, but um, with that same essence of pride. Um, just, you know, just done a different way this year. Nice and hard. Yeah, that's gonna be our, our this year, our, if it was going to be slightly bigger I can always trim the the cookie itself but now I'm putting we could put in sprinkles to make it that much more rainbow like colorful see my face clean I need a way for on top on our website, we'll have all the details highlighting where to get the ice cream bar. Um, you can order it online or in person. Um, that'll be all on there. And um, of course, it'll be um, for the Pride Long Weekend, starting on the Friday and ending on the Monday. Come and get your ice cream sandwich. In a hot summer day. For Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt at the Fairmont Hotel, Vancouver. We're going to have to take a little break now. Rebecca, I heard you were going to shave your head for this next segment. Was that... Uh, no, don't, don't, no, where you heard that? My clippers broke at the beginning of the, <laughs> the pandemic, hence my long, luscious locks. Look at that bald <laughs> eagle. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, I'm John Tanzella, President and CEO of IGLTA, and you are watching Outlook TV. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. We join Mo Hamandi, a beautiful, beautiful man, and he brings to us a pollen. Well, hello, Outlook TV. It's me, Ollie, and today Mo Hamandi is sitting down with us to talk to us about his latest single called Apollon that he composed just on time for the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and Biphobia that he released in collaboration with La Fondation Emergence. 
Uh, it will be for the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. I'm launching my new song uh, in French, and the name is Apollon. Apollon, um, actually a god, as you know, a bisexual god, who's telling uh, everybody my story, what happened in this bus in 2016, when I actually was attacked by homophobic person. I decided to, 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 to tell everybody my story because it's not mine. It's actually the story of each person, each gay LGBTQI2 plus who's living um, a violent. It changed my life. So I want to thank actually, actually this person uh, with a big smile because after this accident, like I went to the hospital and I was thinking about what happened. I came back to my place. I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, oh my God, like my life was in danger. My parents don't know who am I. And imagine if in this night I was murder murdered or I lost my life. I was like, no, I need to do something. I remember I did my coming out, I took the phone, I called my parents, I said to everybody, look, I need to be myself and I need to tell you something very important because I love you, because you mean for me, you mean everything for me. So yes, I am gay and I'm proud to be gay. I was like, you know what, I want to do something from Lebanon to Montreal uh, and collaborate with all those beautiful drag queens that you have because yeah, we do have drag queens in Lebanon for people that, they, that don't know uh, the artistic uh, beautiful side of Lebanese people and the Eastern yes, you can be a drag queen in Lebanon and perform on Instagram and do shows so I contacted uh, those beautiful people and they were very excited, very open-minded to do it. So I did like video clips with them, with all my songs that I produced in Montreal. And it was like creating a bridge between those two cultures by using my songs and by uh, singing with those artists. So yeah, we had fun for like 10 minutes of craziness uh, uh, in Beirut. Oh my God, like I cannot forget it. Apollon is now available on all streaming platforms all around the world. So make sure that you download it now. For Outlook TV, this is Ollie in Montreal. We're going to head out now to Halifax to Apocalyptic Kitchen, which is very hard for me to say. And now we know we're all doomed. <laughs> Let's check out a drag queen teaching a twink how to cook. This is Devastation. She's been a, she started a new show with Bell 5 TV One. It's called Apocalyptic Kitchen. Teaching you life skills you never knew you needed. Well, hello there, and welcome to the Apocalyptic Kitchen. So recent years have seen me surrounded by 20 year olds. And if one thing is certain, is that the next generation, it's lacking in life skills. In the current state of things, apocalypse, we kind of... Mm, the world is just going to that place, basically. Basically, that's what it was. And I was just like, Apocalyptic Kitchen. And I spend a lot of time in my kitchen. So everything kind of happens there. I mean, it is Nova Scotia, so. Type of wall treatments were all very similar. But of course, we wanted to elevate it to queen level. I have my amazing husband, Jacob, and we have Dave, who is a pastry chef. And so all the cooking stuff is basically them. The life skills, the life, or the, you know, the DIY stuff, that kind of comes from me. We just, we have cocktails and we figure out what we, what, what we want to do. Like, these are the best things we should do. It's fine. What has the feedback actually been like for the show? I actually had people message like, oh my God, I tried that tomato soup. It was so good, you know, or they're asking me questions. Like I have so many people asking me questions about orchids now because episode two is all about orchids and mommy's a little obsessed. I have 47, <laughs> you know, at what point am I going to admit that I have a problem? 47 I have 40, orchids? I have 47 orchids. Oh, now. Oh, we're layering. Yes, we're gonna make it all in one thing that fits perfectly on any shelf. The bloopers are the best part, and we mm -hmm. they kind of came by accident. I'm serious, I had a, this, okay, you wanna talk tea? Okay, <laughs> let's talk tea. Because the first season almost killed me. 
Okay, it really did. Because we had no idea what we were actually doing. And we were taping, like, we were editing or we were filming, like, episode three. And I was still starting episode one and had no idea what was going on. So, mommy had a nervous breakdown. Like, it's, so it's not going to be red. Yes, that's the difference between white and red. So Auntie Deva has decided that she needs to teach the children all those life skills that they never knew they needed. We learned along the way, mm -hmm. right? So, and not just me, like Jake learned a lot, Dave learned a lot. I mean, these people, we'd never used cameras before and learned about things like hero shots and whatever, but we were really, really lucky. The guys from Bell, Paul and Chris, they were so amazing working with us and they wanted us to get better they you could really like there was nothing ever negative that came from them it's like okay next time let's just try this let's add this you know okay and it was like it was a learning experience and that's what i really really liked about all of this and so now i'm ready for i'm ready for season two like bring it on let's go stick around you might even learn something here at the apocalyptic kitchen you're watching outlook tv my name's jesse and i'm devastation are you gay and itching to travel again? Check out this next story. I get around, round, get around, I get around. Angus joys the resilience of gay travelers. International travel has been heavily affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And today we're gonna to talk to the LGBTQ plus International Travel Association to find out more about them and the resilience of the LGBTQ plus traveler. <laughs> The organization was actually founded by one person in Toronto and 24 people in South Florida. And it was travel agents and travel advisors that were working to um, create safe and welcoming travel experiences. So not, not very different than what we're doing today, but that was two countries, 25 individuals. And now we are working in 82 countries with about 8,500 travel professionals. Can you talk a little bit about Atlanta? Uh, our conference is, is educational and content. Um, we have speakers from different parts of the world, different segments within tourism. So it's, it's really exciting that our community will get together. A lot of people call our convention every year is Gay Summer Camp because everyone gets to see each other again and it's a lot of fun. You know, we do business and, and but have fun at the same time. So COVID has, has had a, a huge effect on, on global tourism and really has, has changed obviously the way we do business and, and other organizations as well. We did do a, a post-COVID travel um, desires of, of traveling within our community of about 6,500 LGBTQ travelers. And it was quite high um, of a response that 73% said that they plan to travel be with a major vacation before the end of this calendar year. Now, Google Travel did a very similar survey and to non-LGBTQ travelers, and theirs was around 45%. So that tells you um, you know, that our community is uh, a strong travel community and is ready to get going again. And, you know, travel just gives you that opportunity to go out and be yourself and find others and other communities that are like yourself and have similar interests. Um, so there's always been that propensity of wanting to travel within our community. You know, generally, we don't have children as much as the, the non-LGBT community. So that also enables uh, us to travel a little more freely and in shoulder seasons or off seasons where, you know, maybe a family with children, it doesn't have that flexibility. They really have to go in high season because of schools. So there's a lot of different reasons of why our community is, is such a brand loyal and, and uh, resilient community. And we want to travel. That's really kind of the topic of every dinner party I go to is where have you been? Where are you going next? Right? I mean, that's what we talk about. So if you're a traveler out there and you're looking for information and free resources, use our website, IGLTA.org to find uh, welcoming and friendly travel options in 82 countries, whether you're looking at accommodations, travel agents, or cruises, anything you need, we're here to help you. It's a free service. Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt in Vancouver. It's time for us to take a little break now while Emily shows us her floss and assorted other things.
Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. Why did the queer cross the road, Rebecca? I don't know. Why? Well, to get to the grapefruit store, of course, located in Toronto's queer village. As a queer individual, I've been called many names in my lifetime. And one of my favorite names is being called a fruit. And one of my favorite fruits is a grapefruit. Today, we're talking to Peter, the owner of the new lifestyle store called Grapefruit in the heart of the Toronto village. Let's take a tour of his store. I was talking with some friends and uh, just what do we want to call the store like this? We don't know. Um, and we just liked the name. And, uh, you know, in looking up the word uh, grapefruit and its origins, it had some good meaning there as well. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it sort of had a, a non-genderness to it. And, you know, fruit works well with the LGBTQ community. I like to travel quite a bit. And, you know, when I go to cities, I love to go and see, you know, their uh, gay and lesbian areas and businesses. And I find a lot of cities have these great stores and uh, places to go with daytime activity. And uh, we talk to people and th we don't have that in Toronto or we haven't had much of that. Um, and particularly things that are not um, based around our sex lives or alcohol or something like that. And something just to add more to the community. Roman has a background in uh, fashion himself. And so he was a great person to partner with uh, for the store. He works as the creative director for us. So it just kind of thought about what do we look for when we go somewhere and when we're traveling and built something around that, something that would work for us. So, you know, uh, we're a fashion store. We have lifestyle things, uh, things for the home, things that are fun. And, you know, we try to tie it all together and uh, create a store where anybody would feel comfortable coming in, whether uh, whatever your gender expression may be, uh, nobody's going to be uh, confronted with something they may find uh, difficult to handle. And it doesn't matter what age you are, or if your mom wants to go buy you a present, you won't be afraid to send her here uh, to get you a gift card uh, based on what she's going to see in the store. We have actually our own brand of uh, essentials and basics uh, launching in about a week or two uh, from now. So we have uh, sweatpants and sweatshorts, t-shirts and tank tops, uh, all these kind of things. They're all 100% made in the GTA or in Toronto. Although the clothing is uh, primarily produced for men, we in no way uh, identify as a menswear store. We, we're here for everybody. Uh, we like to create a safe space for anybody to come in, try something on, uh, and just be you and, and get the things you like. We are in the village here. We love the LGBT community. We are members of the community but everybody is welcome. You know, th this isn't a, a store that uh, is based on your sexual preference. It's really just great things and uh, bring something good to Toronto. Thank you for a citrusy tour, Peter. This is Sister Fancy Pants for Outlook TV. Up next, we've got a profile on Carol Delinko, a badass woman who's traveled the world for pride and who used to be on this very show. Ah. Hey, viewers. We're here for another episode of Extraordinary Gaze. And today, we're going to talk to Carol Delinko. And when it comes to extraordinary, she takes the cake. With no further ado, here's Carol. My name is Carol Delenko, and I am a proud and out lesbian community member in Vancouver. Um, very proud and very involved, in fact. I uh, was involved in the Maple League, which is the women's fast pitch um, softball league here in Vancouver. I was involved in Vancouver Pride doing their sponsorship and communications as well as now their MC with this voice, come on. And then of course I've uh, worked with many community organizations in Vancouver from uh, community to Loud, the LGBT business organization, to uh, Rainbow Refugee, to um, so many others in our community. And then, of course, was involved as the co-president of Interpride, which is the International Association of Pride Organizers. And that was uh, a pretty large uh, organization and volunteer position. My position with Interpride was really interesting because as a global uh, organization. I had been to quite a few of these countries. I'm, I'm a traveler and uh, in fact have traveled to 81 countries around the world independently. Uh, and so members of Interpride, when they would bring pride organizations into the association, I certainly had an affinity for where they were, what they were doing, and culturally where they stood at that point. 
Interpride also um, holds the licensing for World Pride. So I was, of course, involved in World Pride London, World Pride Madrid, World Pride Toronto, um, and many of the World Prides uh, that are upcoming, Interpride is still licensing and uh, expanding their base and uh, audience around the world. You know, years ago when I got involved in the community, it was uh, to make change. And now there is so much people can do to make change. Aside from just being on social media and, and posting or doing a tweet, those things are great, but you need to go further. And the ticket price for admission that you pay to be a member of this community or any LGBT community is participation. And so I urge anybody who's involved in our community to step up, to show up, to write letters, to march, to speak up, but to do something a little bit more effective than just creating a post on Facebook for your social channels. We can make a huge difference and we need volunteers everywhere. And you will always be welcome wherever you go if you step up, show up, and stand up for our community. Well, this has been John Cross and Without Look TV. And what did I tell you? Carol didn't disappoint. We'll see you all next time. Bye for now. That's all the time we have for this episode of Outlook TV, but we'll be back before you know it. And if you would like to throw your hat in the ring to be a permanent co-host, please contact us. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere. All the social medias. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Emily Ann Fraser. Stay, Stay safe, safe, Canada. Canada.